Spawn's video to uh, some kind of religious guy or something. Post a link. He's done a couple of videos and he has like pictures of like, uh, you know, um, uh, evolution, biology kind of stuff. A biogenesis. Um, you know, he has all this technicalities, you know, how many RNAs should make up a DNA and all that kind of crap. And, you know, it's, you know, 10 million to the 400th power kind of numbers and. But, you know, it's got simple little stupid mistakes like, you know, uh, well, uh, the first cell, it had a way to, it had to have a way to go potty. And I have to explain how the first cell went potty. I mean, come on. You know, you know if you're going to bother with this whole convoluted thing you construct, then you might as well get the stuff right. And, you know, come on, it's just basic biology that, uh, you know, rudimentary cells do not excrete anything. Okay, they meiosis kind of thing I mean you know mitosis stuff just goes right through the membrane slides right through it and out the other side you know and they just chemically combine with the stuff they need um, you know but they don't do any work they just build themselves all right so to make a contribution to this subject I mean I'll, look obviously it's <laughs> you know we don't have a videotape and we're talking about really complex chemistry the most complex chemistry on earth in a way I mean obviously it's not as complex as the geometry of certain atoms that are just really eccentric but there's a lot of eccentric crap um, you know chemistry in you know the first reproducing cell no doubt about that um, so we might as well explore some of this stuff just just ideas um, about how we got from chemistry to a reproducing cell and uh, so, I mean, it seems reasonable to accept the, obviously there was oceans of stuff, you know, the soupy kind of thing, you know, lots of minerals, lots of compounds, because there was nothing, no living things to eat everything, no living things to consume all the vitamins and minerals and all the little goodies that might um, combine um, the um, chemistry that might take place. There was nothing around to decompose it, to consume it, to chew it up. So it had kind of a nice, comfortable existence, and uh, stuff could last a long time too. We got to remember that. So let's say you have this sea, and you have this atmosphere. It doesn't have a, has a bunch of carbon in it. But there's nothing eating the carbon. Uh, there's you know it's got a bunch of other gases in it, ammonia, whatever else, because it's a different world. It's a world where nothing is consumed anything. Um, it's just chemistry. Um, and so you can imagine, okay, so a sea, and you got this, you know, little waves and stuff. All that stuff would still be happening. The moon was still up there and all that crap. <laughs> you know, there's still stuff going on. Lots of activity, volcanoes, all kinds of stuff happening. Uh, it's not a dead planet. I mean, a lot of activity, a lot of chemistry going on. Um, so the first cell, I, I would look, the, the, when you look at the cells, how they reproduce, the, even the ones, the rudimentary ones left. I mean, we've got we to gotta concede that our original ancestors are dead. Okay, they got eaten by their children, so to speak, okay? The, the thing they evolved into ate them and destroyed them. It made them extinct, you know, like a lot of extinctions in our big biology history. Well, in small biology, there was probably plenty of extinctions also. And uh, <clears throat> I think the first, I think it's, you know, pretty easy to speculate that the first, you know, atom cells and whatnot, yeah, they got eaten a long time ago. All right, but anyway, so so if you, this, the, when you look at the way even the cells that exist now reproduce, um, you can sort of see that the membrane isn't something reinvented. It isn't something the cell builds. Okay, a cell splits. That's that's how cells reproduce. So they do split. So when I gave the example of humanity building a reproducing machine and having a toolbox that would come with the machine, it's sort of that idea. I mean, when a cell reproduces there's a part of the cell structure that it just passes off it just gives them a piece of it and they grow a new one from that piece it's like uh, it's like taking a cutting off a plant kind of a thing they they give them the idea of it and the idea is all they need and you can sort of get that with a membrane um, because a membrane is this expandable um, container um, of cells uh, I mean of structure um, that um, you know, you could you can understand that yeah okay you could you could stretch it and then you just add more to it to make it expandable further it's a very flexible thing um, I mean you could take a, a, a drop of oil and you know you can smash it and it'll break into a bunch of little drops of oil 
and you know in water and, and they'll all have their membrane they'll all be little individual droplets um, so you've basically reproduced the original droplet by just smashing the first droplet now imagine if the chemistry of each one of those little oil droplets allowed that droplet to absorb more stuff on the inside of it so it absorbed more than so as stuff went in it collected some of that stuff it consolidated some stuff from the environment and it expanded well as it expanded that membrane would also expand um, and if that membrane had a chemistry compatible with um, adding more structure as it needed so the more ex it expanded the more and more molecules could connect to it so it could expand further and more molecules and expand further so it it has a uh, um, uh, I won't say infinite but you know a, a, a potential to grow with whatever would happen on the inside so you can imagine in this first soupy sea perhaps um, there were these first little membranes with they might have contained some structure uh, I won't say DNA, but they had structure, some complex compounds inside of them. And then as they crashed on the shore or against the rocks, they would get smashed and they would break into three or four pieces. And then those three and four pieces would all grow. So we have all these little membrane-contained bodies uh, that would expand individually. As they got broken, they would expand. If they broken, they would expand and that you kept breaking them and breaking them that eventually you would create a, a zillions and zillions of these cells and so you basically reproduce the cell without physical reproduction in, in the sense that the cell didn't do it the environment reproduced it by force um, so which, but once you have that element in place then it's not a, a huge stretch to um, you know, move on to some other structure inside the cell that would provoke the splitting, that would cause the cell to split, because there would be um, a taking over advantage in this even this limited environment um, for a cell that was easier to split. So you'd have mechanisms that made cells more likely to split, um, and so they become more reproductive uh, indirectly that way, and. Uh, then eventually you have this structure that, you know, not only does it in not only does this incite the splitting, but it has built into its chemistry um, a, an insurance that certain components of the cell are diversely dispersed enough that any splitting will cause a complete copy. And like the the structure of this interior of the cell will also be duplicated because it has, you know, put key ingredients in four different locations inside the cell so when it's split those four you know there's a complete copy of its dynamic and uh, you know then it's not you know it's not too much further along you a really strange failure in my computer um, you know I got a message that stopped recording and said copyrighted material detected or something <laughs> it's just kind of funny I mean it's not copying through the browser it's separate software um, but I was watching a TV episode in the browser before. It's just kind of weird if they've integrated that far into the operating system. That is just really irritating. But anyway, I mean, just talking, I somehow violated a copyright by talking. So anyway, um, so I don't know where I was. Uh, but anyway, so it's, it's not that hard. Look, once you've got these cells that are capable of, of reproducing the hard way physically, you know, being forced to reproduce, it's not that big a step to have one that finally figures out how to do it on its own um, based on the, 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 the mechanics it creates within itself. Um, so anyway, that's just my contribution. Obviously, I don't have the complete answer. Uh, my counter argument to you, Mr. Religious Guy, is, um, you know, as complex as this whole thing is, this A biogenesis, it's a lot more complex figuring out how your God just poofed or how he was here eternally. So you say, you say there's this complex intelligence, this all-knowing, wise, powerful force out there that just always existed. Nothing gave, no A biogenesis, no nothing. It just, boom, it's there forever. Was always there, however, just always there. And even that gets you into trouble. I mean, if it didn't poof it one day, and, and it was always there, I mean, what was it doing forever? I mean, well, how come it took it forever, because it's sort of like a forever, um, before it decided to poof the universe? And wouldn't it first say to itself, holy shit, look, I'm here. This is amazing. I mean, but what, what number were we on the agenda? I mean, the first thing it did was, like, eat a can of peanut butter or something? I mean, you know, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, the, the first thing a god who just got poofed into existence or existed it is, does is to say, oh, yeah, i got to create human beings. Or do you, like, you not think of that for a long time and then decide to create them? And so you're saying that, okay, so he created them this hard way. He poofed the first cell. So we can't, you know, you're going back to abiogenesis and saying, well, God must have made the first cell happen. The first reproducing cell it had to be his finger had to punch something and make it happen because it couldn't happen on its own. 
<laughs> you know, but isn't that just, you're just reaching for the spot where we don't have the videotape, where we can't make the argument as clear and as concisely, so you're just, you're just saying, okay, that's the part where he stuck his finger in. I mean, it's just stupid, because like I said, you're God, you don't have any explanation for this thing, and then you don't have any explanation for his logic or his purpose. I mean, he creates a world, and he doesn't like the people on it, so he kills them all, and then he, he worries about Noah being drunk and naked, and, but you can't see the naked Noah, so you gotta walk backwards. I mean, come on, it is a fucktarded and insane story. How the hell can you buy that crap? Uh, but you'll be so skeptical of um, believing in what seems pretty obvious, which is evolution. Uh, you know. So anyway, um, sorry, no sale. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not gonna live as a, a slave to a god. <laughs> it just ain't gonna happen. Okay? He can. He can enslave me, but he can't own me. Let me put it that way. All right? Your god is never gonna own me ever. Even if he did exist, it just ain't gonna happen. He can tie me down. He can stick nails in my head. But he's not gonna own this brain.